This right here is one of the most highly anticipated 3D printers of the year so far. It's the FLSUN S1. It was announced a few months ago, but we have yet to see it in the hands of any reviewers. Unlike other modern 3D printer launches from other companies, we were not flooded with reviews on day one. All we were presented with was marketing material from FL Sun with some very lofty claims. 110 cubic millimeters per second of flow, 40,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration, and 1,200 millimeters per second print speeds. That's more than double the stats of today's market-leading 3D printer, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. So I'm really excited to get it unboxed today and find out if those claims are really true. If you're new here, my name's Taylor and this is YGK3D. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my future videos. Now before we get into this box, I do just want to thank the sponsor for today's video, PCBWay. In addition to supporting my work and the work of many other creators, they can also support you in your projects. Whether it's PCB manufacturing, sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, or even 3D printing, PCBWay can augment your capabilities to open up new avenues for creation. I appreciate how I can defer to them for things that I just don't have the time, skills, or equipment for. Whether it's printing peak, molding polycarbonate, or machining aluminum, PCBWay has you covered. Consider checking them out for your next project. So you may or may not have heard of FL Sun before. They are a company in the 3D printing space that focuses exclusively on Delta printers. Delta kinematics are quite unlike what we normally see on the 3D printing market. Normally, they're either Cartesian machines or more recently, Core XY. But FL Sun has stuck true to their roots, dating all the way back to 2016 with their first machine, the QQS. Their hardware has evolved and gotten better, gotten faster and more impressive. Throughout the years, they've released a variety of machines like the Super Racer and the V400. Now in 2024, we have the S1 and the T1. The S1 is gonna be their flagship and the T1 is gonna be their budget model. The T1 is only slightly less capable than the S1. With 90 cubic millimeters per second of flow, 1000 millimeters per second print speeds and 30,000 millimeters per second squared accelerations. Inside this box is the S1. So the first thing I've noticed about this printer is just how enormous it is. The one thing about Delta printers is that they're generally taller than they are wide. So they have a lot of build height relative to their build area. I've personally never owned a Delta printer, so I'm pretty excited to see what it is all about, but it's not just a Delta printer. It is the latest generation Delta printer, which on paper at least outperforms all of the Core XY and Cartesian printers on the market today. Okay, let's get this thing open and see what we're dealing with. So immediately I'm seeing some hollow cavities here with nothing in them. So the box isn't completely packed to the brim, but they've padded it very well so it doesn't get damaged during shipping. 500 grams of high-speed PLA. Here we have a box with some tools in it. The one thing that is worth talking about here, I'm seeing a complete hot-end assembly. And this looks quite unlike anything I've seen on any other printer I've owned. It has a really big ceramic heating core. Looks like a bimetallic heat break. The actual melt zone is ginormous even bigger than your standard Volcano. It's got what looks to be a standard V6 thread on this nozzle. The geometry of it looks a little bit unique, so it may or may not be proprietary. I'm not quite sure. But it is very interesting to see what a 110 millimeter cubed per second hot end looks like. I guess it can push a lot of plastic. We're gonna find out. Here we have our power cable, instruction manual. So this is the front touch display. It looks like there's going to be a lot of real estate to interact with the printer. We have a physical switch at the front, which is always a nice touch instead of that rocker switch way at the back of the printer. And we have two USB slots, which is one more than we normally see. So we have this really big piece of foam here, and there's a sticker with some instructions on what we're supposed to do next. And it actually tells us to rotate this box 90 degrees to stand it upright before proceeding with the unboxing. I did not expect it to be this big. Where am I gonna put this? Ah, left a residue. I hate it when that happens. 
So now that the printer's out of the box, there are a few assembly steps before we can get up and running. First thing we're gonna do is attach the front door using some of the hinges in here. So here we have it, the FL Sun S1. There were just a few basic steps to get this thing assembled, which included the installation of the hinges and this front glass panel. We also had to attach the front LCD bezel. Once we'd done that, we ran through some basic calibrations like vibration compensation and bed leveling. Then we were ready for our first print, the classic 3D Benchy. This completed in a mere eight minutes, and overall the quality is pretty solid. It's not perfect, but it is pretty darn good considering how quickly it printed. On paper, the specs of this machine are a little bit hard to believe. When you consider that this is supposedly twice as fast as something like the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon or any other modern 3D printer, you might be a little bit skeptical. And so was I. But when you get hands-on with this machine and you start to look at all of the engineering that went into this, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Personally, I've never owned a Delta printer, so this is all new territory for me. On a traditional Cartesian motion system, you have X, Y, and Z, which are all independently driven and decoupled from one another. On a core XY motion system, you have two motors that control X and Y, and X and Y are coupled, with the Z axis remaining independent. On a delta printer, there's three motors that work in sequence to control both the vertical motion of the printhead, as well as the XY position within the build volume. The printhead itself is suspended by carbon rods. If we look inside the printer, you can see the print head is just hanging out here. And depending on the position of these linear rails, that's going to determine the angle of the carbon rod. And that's thereby going to determine the position of the print head and its height. So we don't have our Z axis and our X, Y axes being independent like on those other traditional motion systems. They're all working together to achieve the full range of motion of the print head. The motors in this motion system on the FL Sun S1 use closed loop control. So there's a PCB attached to each stepper motor, which is actively monitoring its position. So you won't have lost steps and layer shifting on this printer like you would on some other printers that use open loop control. Up here in the top of the printer, we have a filament dry box. And it's not just the dry box, it's actually a filament dryer. It's actively heated to dry our filament as we print, and on the LCD, we can see both the current humidity as well as the current temperature of this chamber. So that's a really nice touch. As far as cooling is concerned, this does not have a traditional cooling setup whatsoever. Instead of a small fan being mounted to the printhead, we have an external blower, which blows air through a hose, which is then supplied to the printhead. This allows us to have a much bigger fan than what you could reasonably mount on the printhead itself. So we get a lot more flow and a lot better cooling for printing at high speeds especially with those filaments like PLA that really need it. So in addition to having a really robust motion system that is capable of ultra high speed printing, we also have some value added features. We have a built in camera for AI failure detection, and we have a LIDAR for automatic flow calibration. So it's got a lot of those features that we became familiar with from the Bamboo Lab X1 carbon. We have a really large front LCD display. With all of that real estate, we can display the real-time print speeds as well as a variety of other statistics. So it's a very nice interface. However, I have not yet been able to figure out if it is web-enabled and we can access that from our computer. The printer is running Clipper for firmware, so theoretically there could be a fluid or a mainsail front end that we can access through the web. So this printer seems like it has everything going for it, and it certainly can print fast. I haven't even scratched the surface of validating all of their crazy marketing claims of 110 millimeters cubed per second of flow, 40,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration, and 1200 millimeters per second print speeds. But what I can say is that it is well built and it looks to be a highly capable printer. I will be putting this machine through its paces in a future video. You won't want to miss that, so make sure you get subscribed.
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think of the S1. Do you think it will live up to expectation or will it fall flat and it was all just marketing after all? So far, it's looking like it might be the real deal. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Taylor, this is YGK 3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.